What is up YouTube? Welcome back to, I ain't, I'm gonna do the intro when I'm cute in the end. All right, so today's video is probably going to frustrate, frust, frustrate you. It frustrated me to like no end, but because I went on the emotional roller coaster, I'm going to come back and bring you guys along too. And we have company. Hi, hello. From the pimple on my chin that just does not want me to be happy apparently. So today's story is going to be about Reginald and Beverly Brooks and um yeah they met in high school they were high school sweethearts and Reginald was just such a sweet and romantic guy like Beverly was smitten from the beginning. She said he was very romantic, he was very chivalrous, he was just he was just that guy. He just made her feel so special and protected. And apparently there were no warning signs or red flags in the beginning. But I mean, you know, the thing about crazy people, they could pretend not to be crazy for a minute. But the thing that's also, you know, prevalent in the crazy community is that eventually their true colors show. And when somebody shows you their true colors, the first time, girl, believe them, okay? Shortly after high school, Beverly fell pregnant. I said it like she fell ill. She fell pregnant and he was very excited actually they both were excited about you know becoming parents and just having this physical representation of their love he thought that marrying her was gonna be the right thing to do so he proposed of course she said yes because she's like you know i ain't trying to just be somebody's baby mama if i can be their wife they want me to be you know if i love them and they love me let's just make this thing official so she said yes they get married and unfortunately for little old beverly that's when things start to change because she noticed soon after that he became kind of jealous and controlling and at first it was just little things but then I mean you know things escalated quickly one day in particular he overheard her on the phone with her mother letting her know that you know they had family in town and that they wanted to come drop by and see her because they hadn't seen her in years and she was like sure just come by we're here you can meet my husband as soon as she hangs up the phone, he throws a fit. And he's just like, they can't come here. I just don't want company. And she's like, what's the big deal? It's just my mom and my family. He's just like, it's not a big deal. I just don't want company. Now, this is back in the day before they had cell phones, honey. So she couldn't just ring mama up or send her a quick text and be like, you know what? Don't come. Never mind. He's tripping. So her family and her mom show up. And they're knocking on the door and homegirl just has to pretend like they are not there like he refuses to let her open the door he's like just you know just wait it out eventually they'll go away and like they're knocking forever i'm surprised they didn't like call the police or something because if i just talked to you know a family member of mine and i'm like i'm on the way and then i get there and your car is outside but you're not answering girl i'm calling the police I need to know that you're okay but nevertheless after a while of them knocking and not being let in they just decide to leave and when they get home they give her a call and she's just like you know um yeah I'm sorry about that at that point Beverly was like you know maybe it's just a better idea for me to visit other people because if he gonna trip like this So when she would visit people, he never would go. He never wanted to visit anybody else. Girl, what is... Child, these eyebrows, you know. Anytime she visited anyone else, he would just stay behind. And she thought that he was just becoming a loner. Like, he just enjoyed his solitude. She didn't think anything weird of it. She just let him be. And she would just go out and visit people on her own. It got to the point where he did not want to be around people like at all like he barely wanted to go anywhere like even to the grocery store things like that he just will go to work come home and be weird from there he became increasingly paranoid as well like he started to think that people were out to get him make comments about you know people spying on him it's like girl Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. 
So as time goes on and Reginald is becoming weirder and weirder, the couple keep having kids somehow. I'm like, girl, I wouldn't even want to sleep with a weirdo like that. But nevertheless, they have three sons together. And um, he's also kind of weird with the children. But one night, Beverly prepares a meal for the kids and her, well, shit, the whole family. But she doesn't eat. Sometimes, you know, I'm like this. I typically don't eat as soon as I finish cooking, like, unless I'm real hungry. But if I'm cook if I'm cooking a meal that takes a long time and I'm cleaning dishes after I cook, like, sometimes I'm just, I'm not even in the mood. I'm not even hungry no more. I'm full off smells. And quiet as it's kept, sometimes I just like to take sips and dips of the food the whole way through. So I'm probably really just full by the time I finish taste testing everything for the last two hours that I've been in the kitchen. That's probably really what it is. But nevertheless... Oftentimes, when I finish cooking, I don't eat right away either. So, I understand where Beverly is coming from on this particular night. She makes a meal for the kids. and Well, for everybody, like I said. And she's not hungry. She decides, you know, if she becomes hungry, she's going to eat later. But she sets the plates down for the kids and the husband of hers. They all eat. And then Reginald, all of a sudden, is not feeling well. And so, he starts complaining of these abdomen pains and he's just really bugging out like you must have poisoned me and she's like that makes no sense my kids ate this meal even if I was trying to kill you why would I want to hurt my children I wouldn't do that I love them for sure it makes no sense like and he's like no because you didn't eat it must be something in the food so he like he forces her to eat he sits her down and he's just like eat this bowl of chili and prove it to me and so she's like okay so Beverly's eating the food nothing's happening to her nothing has happened to the children who ate the same time as old Reginald and he's still in pain like he's still doubling over in pain just being a big old baby just like oh, I'm gonna die and all of this extra shenanigans and so she decides that she's sick of hearing it and she's gonna take him to the emergency room when they get there, the doctors find that he has appendicitis and he literally would have died had she waited just 30 more minutes to take him to take him in. So they patch him up, do what needs to be done, send him home. And you would think that Reginald would be like, you know what? Maybe I'm tripping. When he starts to have these little par paranoid episodes but no he becomes paranoid that his co-workers are now trying to poison and kill him and he can't work there anymore and he 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 leaves his job because of that he was convinced that they were doing things to his lunch trying to kill him after him you know just crazy so now crazy reginald is at home all day while the rest of the family is doing their thing as normal, going to school, going to work, Reginald is just at the house bugging out. The kids would have company and he would stare at them like he would go to his room and then open the door like the bedroom door and just stand there and just like peek out, peek out at them and just stare and the kids would complain to the mom and Beverly was just like you know your dad is just weird maybe he's just going through something he's never harmed you guys there's nothing to worry about and they were just like girl are you sure are you sure but you know Beverly wanted to stick by her husband she was like she thought that he was just he just I don't know. She just thought he was being weird. That's what she would tell the kids. He was just being weird. You know, your dad is just weird. He's harmless. He's just strange. <sighs> she actually said in her interview that it did not bother her at all. She just, she thought that her husband was going through something and he needed help. And she just did not want to leave him. She took vows for better, for worth, in sickness and in health. And she just did not want to abandon him because he had made her life miserable and the you know the lives of her children to her that was not good enough reason so I don't know how you know how young you guys are but remember back in the day television used to literally go off at some point in the night you would get this like staticky 
black and white screen and it would just be white noise and weirdness and no shows were coming on after that like till the morning news or whatever came on first thing in the morning which probably was the news but anyway that's not important back in those days Beverly said that she will go to bed at night and she will fall asleep to old Reginald sitting up in the bed watching television but the static and the white noise would bother her so she would often wake up in the middle of the night and here the TV was still left on and like the brightness of the lights and the noise was just impossible to sleep through. And so she would ask Reginald like, hey, you going to turn that thing off? And he would just literally be sitting up in the bed, staring at the TV, like staring at the screen. No expression. He would not respond to her nothing for like hours and by this time he had not been physically abusive to her so she wasn't afraid of him in that sense but she was afraid that you know he was crazy so she ain't not really what he would do and so she wouldn't push the issue she would just be like you gonna turn that off no she was afraid to get up and turn the thing off herself which i get it i would have been kind of afraid to get up shit you ain't about to snap on me and kill me one night in particular, I feel like I've said one night a lot, but if I haven't, then one night Beverly is af asleep in her bed and she is awakened not by the sound, sound of the static ETV and the weirdness of that, but by the smell of smoke. And of course, that's alarming for anybody, especially a mother who has children in the house. So my nose itches. I'm not flaking bookers, I swear. So she gets up and she is like running to the kitchen and she notices there's a doll like a rag doll that they had in the house that was hanging up i think on the wall or something it was like a decoration it's a small rag doll on the eye of the stove and it was turned onto a low flame and it kind of just caught flame and so the kids are knocked out cold and of course they're not weirdos so really not really viable suspects in this but guess who is up oddly looking crazy you guessed it, Reginald. She begins questioning him, asking him like, why would you do this? We have kids in the house, we could have been killed. This is the middle of the night. And he's just like, I mean, obviously a girl was on purpose. Like, of course he knows this. So I don't know why she felt, I don't know. Let me just move through the story without passing and casting my judgment. You see how I said I went on an emotional roller coaster? Now I'm getting all worked up again. Cause I'm, I'm mad but anyway let me just finish telling you so anyway she's asking him why would you do this we're asleep we could have been killed and he's not saying a word he never gives an explanation he never of course extends an apology he's just looking at her like well that's not that's that's not how he was looking at her he's just staring blankly at her but you know it's kind of like girl he knows all that even even with that she said that she wanted to stick it out with her husband are you frustrated too you have to be you have to be this is anyway she wanted to stick it out with her husband she said that she felt like he needed help she didn't want to abandon him let me tell you something i understand that there are bumps in the road in any relationship or marriage and I probably look a little too crazy right now to be trying to deliver a, um, a wordful and wise message right now. But you got to listen to the message and not look at the messenger right now. Situations like this that are like are a threat to your health. Girl, go. I ain't. Mm -mm. I'm not sacrificing or jeopardizing my health, my sanity, safety none of that for nobody honestly even if you go to jail i ain't nobody's down there, bitch let me tell you something if you go to jail longer than the weekend if i can't bail you out on monday i'm out <clears throat> i'm not sticking through no nonsense judge me judge me all you want as crazy as this sounds beverly decides to let the incident go yes she did but unfortunately he did not stop with the these shenanigans a couple days after that she wakes up not to smoke or anything crazy like that but there's this stuffed animal that their youngest son who at the time was 11 he would always have he would always he would always sleep with she wakes up and the animal is strung up like 
from the ceiling so she's just thinking at this point you know her sons are like a 17 15 and 11 she's thinking boys will be boys they were having some kind of rough play and they you know it made a joke probably teasing the youngest hung it from the ceiling and made him sleep without it something along those lines that was kind of makes sense right but as she gets closer she notices that the doll is hanging by a noose like an old school well done noose that you know they used to hang slaves and people of color on back in the day my eyeshadow is starting to look horrible but you know we're gonna push through whatever and then she also notices that there is a hole in the heart of the doll and she becomes concerned because a her kids don't know how to tie a damn noose and b her husband oh crazy reginald has started to get into voodoo like he really believed in voodoo and that you could put spells on people and do things to their belongings that would cause them harm bring them harm girl what's going on up here reginald see not today satan you ain't gonna have me looking crazy she takes the doll down she doesn't even bother to confront reginald which of course girl he's not gonna offer you any kind of explanation we all know this by now and then things just go downhill from there she hears these weird crazy loud noises coming from her bedroom door the bedroom door is closed and locked and reginald is in there chanting honey chanting these weird inaudible words sounds whatever you want to call it she couldn't make it out she said it was not it was not english okay she just she didn't know what it was but she knew it wasn't that and it wasn't familiar she was knocking on the door trying to get reginald's attention he's not responding she's beating on the door trying to get the door open nothing so she tells him that she's going to call the police he is not moved by that at all so she proceeds to call the police and when they show up she's like see y'all hear that and they knock on the door to get reginald's attention he actually responds to them he allows them to come in and they close the door <sighs> she cannot hear what the police and what reginald are saying after about 10 minutes the police come out and they let her know that they're leaving and she's like okay are you taking him with you and they're like no and so she's like um but he was making weird noises and they're like he's really not committing any crimes he hasn't hurt anybody he hasn't threatened anyone so there's no way we can take him he's in his home he has not broken any laws so it was really nothing that they could do but they were like if he becomes dangerous or a threat to you guys you know just call us back you got the number and they bounce beverly is very alarmed that's not funny i don't know why i giggled she's very alarmed at this point and she's like you know something has to be done so she calls the local hospital and asks you know is there anything that i can do unfortunately for the regular hospital they said that she would have to be able to bring him in and she knew that he wasn't going like she knew he wasn't just gonna willfully get in the car and be like all right let's go down to the hospital and have me committed oh shit she was feeling kind of hopeless at this point you know not really knowing what to do to help her husband she still didn't want to leave him still a better woman than me and yeah she just she did not know exactly what it was she could do i would have left reginald's crazy ass a long time ago a long time ago one day little beverly goes into the kitchen and there is the phone the house phone is smashed to smithereens all over the floor and she is just like wtf what happened what now Reginald comes in and he's just like, you know, going on a rant about how people are listening to their conversations and recording them. They don't need a phone. They're being tapped. They can't trust the phone. And he had to get rid of it. Pronto. The children are growing tired of his shenanigans. And so they try to, you know, stick up for their mother and kind of stick, stand up to him and let him know, look, man, we, we sick of this shit. You crazy. And we're sick of it okay we tired we are tired he did not like that 
so progressively he becomes very volatile and abusive to them that we get into physical altercations it got to the point where Beverly said she was afraid to leave them home with him or you know go to sleep at night fearing that something would happen and somebody would take it too far either between the boys or her psychotic husband Reginald specifically hated when he felt like Beverly took the kid's side over his he felt like you know she that's just something she shouldn't be doing I'm like y'all a family what you mean sides but whatever there was a fight that had gotten really bad between him and the oldest son and at the end of the fight he pretty much told them you know you're dead meat all of you you'll regret this mark my words you will they just thought you know he's just nuts he's just a nutcase didn't really take him serious it's like okay okay girl this fight was the final straw though for Beverly because she was just tired homegirl had really tried to stick it out and ride for her husband and he just was not getting any better so she decided that she wanted to file for divorce because she just couldn't take it anymore like she goes to see a divorce lawyer she files the paperwork she even goes home to have a conversation with reginald and she tells him like look you have to find a home because this is the home for me and the children and she because she was the only one working he had quit his job you know he wasn't bringing in no money because he said that they were trying to poison him down to the workplace she gave him money and told him hey you can take this to get you a head start to start your life over i'm not going to just put you out with nothing which is kind of generous of home girl you know a lot more generous than a lot of us probably would be given the situation and the circumstances i don't know what his response to that was verbally but he did not i mean he took the money but he didn't leave like days went by he did not leave and then from there, because the fight between the oldest and the crazy ass husband was so bad and physical, and because he said, you know, they pretty much were dead meat, she told the boys not to come home after school until they know for sure that she was there because she was just stressed, thinking that another altercation would come up and somebody will be hurt. And she just was tired of the shit. So she was like, you know what? This is what we do. I work Monday through Friday during the time you go to school. Do not go home until I let you know that I'm there. That way I'm there and I can defuse the situation. And so that's what they proceeded to do that following week. Every day she would go to work. The boys would go to school. And then after school they would just hang out at a friend's. And so they got the word that she was home. It was, it was good to come. Meanwhile, Reginald would just be at the house. Doing God knows what. Beverly was just waiting on the divorce papers to come back. She thought that, okay, if he did not want to leave on his own, surely when we got divorced and we go to court, they'll make him leave. So that was the plan for them, you know, to just ride it out, wait on the divorce to be finalized. He would be forced to leave and then they can go back to the regular life. But they had this plan for in the meantime. So, I mean, it works for them Monday through Friday. But Saturday morning comes and Beverly decides that she's going to go into work for a couple of hours and then probably run some errands and then come home and everything will be fine. So on this particular Saturday morning, she does that. Like, I think all human beings have some type of instinct that just this intuition that when something is terribly wrong. She said that after a couple of hours being at work, it was time to go home, but she felt like she should not go run the errands. She should just go straight home. So that's what she did. Instead of running the errands, she goes home. When she gets there, and the first red flag is that when she opens the door, their little dog Cotton does not greet her at the door. Now, if you know if you got a dog, you already know the tea. If you have a dog and you open the door, the first thing you're gonna see is your dog. They always come running to the door, like who this is, you know, checking out the scene, wanting to know who's coming through the front door. Cotton was nowhere to be found. She didn't hear Cotton's little paws traveling through the house. There was actually no noise in the house except for some music that was playing really, really low. And she just figured that was weird Reggie, you know, listening to some old jazz or something. So she puts her things down and then she's like, let me go see what the boys want to eat. When she gets to their room, all three of them are in their bed under the covers. And she's like, you know what? Nah, y'all not sleeping. There's something in my eye. Y'all not sleeping in on Saturday not today really blue so she proceeds to wake the boys up she goes to the first 
which is the oldest and she notices like he's sleep like 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 this in a kind of a weird position for him i guess you know you know your kids that was kind of a red flag for her so she gets closer and she notices there is a bullet hole in the side of his head and that is when you know i'm sure there are no words to describe how <sighs> she fell at that moment but she goes to the other two pull the cover back and it's the same thing like for the 11 year old she said the scene was so so gruesome all three of her sons have been killed by a single gunshot wound to the head and reginald was nowhere in the house she runs to call the police and she lets them know like she just came home from work all three of her children are have been murdered she assumes it's by her husband of course for obvious reasons reginald ain't shit he really ain't shit like y'all gotta hear the rest of this story he really like it gets worse he really ain't shit okay so she tells him she has to leave the house immediately because she does not know where he is he could be still in the house hiding somewhere ready to kill her too and she goes to her mother's to hide and leaves the police to investigate and you know you know remove her son's bodies from the home the police catch this asshole boarding a bus in Utah. He was headed to Vegas. He had checked two bags onto the bus, but he was only claiming one. And so when they cleared the bus out and checked the last unaccounted for bag, which was the same bag he checked in, stupid, it had a gun inside, which was the same caliber that was used to kill his three sons. Of course, he's a coward, so he pleads not guilty. He denies everything, says that it's not him. But in actuality, his plan was never to hurt Beverly. Like, well, not to, let me rephrase that. His plan was never to kill Beverly. He wanted to hurt her by killing their three kids, by killing her three children. So he did that and he vamped. That was his plan. <sighs> like, how terrible of a person do you have to be? to retaliate against your wife like to kill your kids to do anything i don't know it's a different kind of evil out here child i don't know who they breed he goes to trial of course he is found guilty and sentenced to death by lethal injection and he spent 30 i believe 31 years either it was either 30 or 31 years he spent on death row waiting for his date so in 2011, he finally was going to be lethally injected. I don't know what takes so long. Just go on and take him out back and, and do the damn thing. Like, no. Don't feed and house them for 30 years. So this is the part of the story why I said about 10 minutes ago that he just really wasn't shit. Like he was just really a terrible, nasty person. Because on the date of his execution, Beverly, her sisters, and a cousin... I got these shirts made that have the three boys' pictures on it. And I'll put a picture in the video. And here, let me let me just say this. A lot of the stories I tell have pictures. A lot of the pictures are very... And so I don't insert them just out of respect because I feel like... I don't know. And then I don't want my videos demonetized, girl. I'm just going to keep it real. But even if it wasn't about the demonetization of YouTube, I don't feel like it's... I don't know I just don't feel comfortable putting some pictures in the videos so I try not to put like crime scene photos in there but anyway I'll put pictures of the shirts that they wore because they're not bad ain't nothing wrong with that they wore the shirts his execution sat there the intent behind it really was you know of course to show support as their mother and family of the victims right but they also because he had not over the 30 years he still had not apologized not once to Beverly for killing their kids and so they thought that maybe this would trigger some kind of remorse. But when he saw them and he was asked, you know, do you have any last words? He looks at Beverly, gives her the double middle fingers, two middle fingers. And then that was it. Like, who does that? Homeboy had to have busted hell wide open. Like, <laughs> pretty sure as soon as his little poison got through his system and he died you know what's so crazy i just realized that he was so paranoid about people poisoning him and then he got sentenced to death by lethal injection that's what your ass get yeah you were so scared of being poisoned he got poisoned in the end but anyway like i was about to say 
he must have busted hell wide open because honey and then Beverly's just like well god damn the shirts were a fail because this bitch still doesn't care but Beverly does have an happy and happy ending girl trying to be proper and just messed up the whole sentence Beverly does have a happy ending she a year after losing her sons I hate trying to tell the end of the story while I'm doing lip liner and I always do that and then I'm just like why am I doing this hold on fortunately Beverly does have a happy ending though a year after she lost her son she met a man a good one this time he actually had three sons and they got married and they spent 34 years together unfortunately he died 34 years later you know but they had a long happy life together she still has the three sons in her life of course she was a part of raising them from young so that was like a blessing to her it was like I mean of course nobody can replace your children but it was kind of like she got her kids back with the opportunity to raise the three sons she lost you know you, you get what I'm saying without saying that they replaced her sons of course and she said herself that it helped her to cope with the loss of her children so that's good I couldn't imagine I'm sure she felt so much grief like it was so many red flags I'm sure she felt so so terrible so much guilt for how the story turned out I mean I think I would I don't think it's her girl this is so tricky I'm just gonna I'm done put a little new lipstick on today you know cause that's what the men's like alright so this is the finished look I am going to now try to do something to my hair and look presentable th for the rest of the day you know because right now I'm kind of looking like so nobody care about me and I don't really care about myself but that is it for this video if you like the video if you like the look please don't forget to of course give it a thumbs up share comment subscribe if you have not on your way out thank you so much for watching as always I appreciate you and I will see you in the next one peace